Hey, it's Joel, LTX 2023, Spring Break Capital of the World. I'm at the Rapidia booth with my buddy, Alan. What's up, Alan? Not too much. Very great, busy. <laughs> great LTX. <laughs> yes, the LTX is going awesome today. So I'm here at your booth because I see what looks like a 3D printer with a canister on it. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so this is our uh, metal 3D printing system, the Conflux One. So what the Conflux One does is it uses a binder material mixed with metal powder to uh, produce a paste, which has toothpaste-like consistency, which is then extruded through a pump onto the build plate. And then we take those parts, and they go into the sintering furnace, and in about 12 hours, you have fully dense metal parts. Well, okay, let's, let's back up just a little bit. So then the paste is creating a green part. That's correct, yep. And that green part then is how much bigger before it's sintered? So we scale the parts up about 16.5% uh, in the slicer, so there is about an 18% shrinkage in the furnace. 18%, is that pretty common? That is pretty common, yep. And the paste then is laid down into a shape, so you have no heat but you know gravity to, to worry about? That's correct, yeah, there's no, uh, no thermal hot end. Uh, the paste is extruded at room temperature. We do heat the bed ever so slightly to 40C during printing to promote drying for each layer. Um, the big catch here is you want to remove as much moisture from the previously deposited layer as you can to prevent sagging. So we can talk about sagging, but you have an IDEX system. So can you actually put in a support interface? That's correct, yeah. So we, we do have an IDEX system. The second tool head is a ceramic uh, support material that uh, burns off in the furnace at a, at a certain temperature. How do you support extruded metal paste? What material is that? The support material is a ceramic uh, mixed with binder and water. Um, it's of our own special blend. Many years of research have gone into the paste formulation, so um, a lot of trial and error ha have got us there. But yeah, it's just a it's a standard ceramic, uh, similar to the to the solids loading and the material content of the metal paste, but without the metal powder. Okay, and it being a green part, you actually had one right over there, and I accidentally popped off that <laughs> that that raft that had that ceramic support layer on, and it was surprising how easy it was to just pop off. Yeah, the, the strength of it I, I liken to chalk, like it's typical schoolhouse chalk, um, and people are often surprised on how easily it, it breaks apart. So, you know, when, you're, when your part's in its green state, you, you have to handle it carefully. Um, they're not super robust, you have to be careful, um, but once it goes into the furnace and it comes out, it's, you can stand on it and it'll be fine. You know, we, it passes the- Stand on it. Oh, we can stand on it, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a manifold, there's a scooter back here. You guys printed that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a scooter uh, that we printed for Formnext uh, last year. Yeah, it was uh, a total hit at the, at the show there as well. <laughs> as one would think, okay, you, we've talked about the furnace now. Usually when we talk about green parts from a, a paste printer, metal paste into a furnace, it starts to get a little bit of complex. What have you done to reduce complexity there? Yeah, so our, our binder system, or the binder that we're using uh, and the water that we're using is so low in our paste mixture that we don't have to do any sort of uh, baths you know, to, to turn the green parts to brown parts to center them. Um, basically, what we all we have to do is do a, a thermal debind step in the centering process um, on the furnace. And that's quite quick because of the high solids loading and the low uh, binder and, and water loading or content. So it's 12 hours, right? Yep, 12 hours. <laughs> and uh, if you have some really crazy large shapes, uh, you can bump it up to 18 hours to prevent any sort of, you know, anything happening during that sintering process. You want it to be, you know, a very homogenous uh, fusing of the material. But for what most of the stuff that we print in the lab, it's all 12-hour uh, cycles. The machine just did something. I don't know if you caught it there, but there was just this light going back and forth, back and forth. What is that part of the process? Yeah, so the very aggressive blinding light. <laughs> The reason why all these panels are on here uh, is we have a, a drying lamp that, that does a pass every layer. Um, and so if, if I open oh, again, this- to remove the moisture. To remove the moisture, exactly, yeah. If I show you what, what's actually happening on the build plate during that lamp pass, it really hurts your eyes, but you can see the, the moisture evaporating very quickly uh, from the lamp. So now we've got finished parts out of the sintering oven. They look great. What is the reason someone would go with a 3D printed metal part from a metal paste rather than say something that's been milled or produced with uh, a powder bed fusion? For the price point, powder bed fusion can get quite expensive as well as the facility requirements to run those kinds of machines. Uh, you know, all the PPE, um, the high power requirements. Um, our system runs on a standard uh, three phase, or it can run on standard three phase electrical or on your, uh, your dryer plug. You could actually run it on a home electrical system. Absolutely, you can totally run this on a home electrical system. We've done an install at a home before. <laughs> it's 
dead easy to use. So if you are familiar with any sort of uh, FFF, you know, classic 3D printing with PLA, you can take this machine and pick it up in about a day, and you're off to the races. So there's a no day, a day. Uh -huh. It is that easy to pick up if you have experience in 3D printing. Okay, so if you know generally how 3D printing goes, the FFF style 3D printing, in a day you could be up making green metal parts and the next day having a nice centered final part. That's exactly it. Yeah. That's amazing, I love that. Okay, look into that camera right there, talk to the audience, tell them where they can find out more about Rapidia and the awesome stuff you do. Yeah, so if you want to find out more about Rapidia, you can check out our website at rapidia.com. Um, we're a Canadian-based company and we love 3D printing. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you something real quick here, just because people are gonna wanna know, anything cool coming down the pipeline that you can talk about? <laughs> well, uh, we're looking into a green machining uh, technology, uh, uh, by layer, or by, uh, by layer, yep. Green machining by layer. We're not gonna go any further into that because I want you to have to think about this. All right, well, I like to close out things with a high five, Alan, are you up for it? I'm up for it. Okay, hold on, we gotta, we gotta, <laughs> So let's, we got to say goodbye to the audience, okay. right? We yeah. got to thank them for making it this far because if they did, they're pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I tell people to hug each other more okay. and fight for a cause they believe in. How does that sound? That sounds perfect. Yeah, that, and then I offer them a high five. Right on. Okay, well, offer the audience a high five. Oh, a high five to the audience. Yeah, give it to them. <laughs> they, they deserve it. They made it this far. Here we go. Nailed it. Good job, oh Alan. <laughs> Thanks.